up to 20% of our kids are being bullied at schools as we speak. Up to 200 million kids are being bullied around the world. Very shocking numbers. Despite all the actions and acts around the world to really try to stop this phenomenon, it's still there engraved in our societies. The problem is not just about the damage that happens to our kids or the stressors that they go through if they go through uh, bullying at their early years. The problem is all these problems last with them. They grow with them as if they are engraved in their personalities. In a new study in North Carolina, they took kids from the school years till the age of 24 and 26 to look at the impact of bullying on them. They found very high risk of depression and anxiety, agoraphobia, panic disorders for bullying victims, a very high risk of antisocial personality disorder for bullies, and for the people that are bullies and victims at the same time, there is a 25% possibility of having suicidal thoughts or th suicide acts, which is very alarming. I see this every day in therapy rooms that are people in their 40s and 50s talking about the miseries that they have been through in their early years at school f as being uh, bullied by other kids. The problem is they are top achievers now, yet the pain and the agony is engraved in their hearts, which is a big problem. So what can we do as caregivers or parents in order to help our kids, whether they are bullies or they are bully victims? If my kid is a victim, I should be aware of the red flags. Red flags are mainly change of behaviors like change in sleep, appetite, bedwetting, change of behavior like acting out, crying a lot, change of even physical conditions like complaining a lot, from headaches or tummy aches, or saying excuses not to go to school. One of the things that we should be aware of as well is loss of belongings or injuries. If we see any of these red flags, we should tackle this right away in a very supportive medium. So by sharing stories about adults that has been uh, that have been bullied at their early years, such experiences will give our kids the sense that this is a normal thing. There is no shame or blame to themselves if they do so. And we should give them a validation, acceptance of their feelings and emotions, support and building some sort of plans or strategies with them in how to handle the bullying action. At the same time, trying to build their self-confidence and assertiveness in order to avoid acting in a passive or aggressive way. And reaching out for psychological help is a really important factor as well in order to enable our kids to feel the connection and the self-love. So if my kid is a bully, what can I do? Bullying happens because of a problem there. Maybe it's a family problem, maybe it's a psychological problem related to the kid himself or unmet needs. So we should understand what is this unmet need? Is it for appreciation, for acceptance, for acting out? Why is he behaving like that? And we should reach out for psychological help right away in order to understand it and help our kid developing a better or positive coping strategies to their problems other than just acting out in a negative way. And finally, we should increase awareness among witnesses, which are people that are not victims or bullies, the people in between that are seeing but passively act. They don't do anything. We should increase awareness that they can act because in 50% of the times, they can prevent a bullying action from taking place. They should treat this with disgust and hatred that it is not acceptable to do such action in our surrounding. They shouldn't be passive. They shouldn't be afraid of the bully that he will take it on them. They should feel the support that they will get if they really manage to stop such action. And hopefully at a point in time, we'll talk about our successful
achievement of really being able to eliminate such a thing from the whole world.